Praise God. Listen to this one. This is so amazing. Uh, glory to God. And it's not anything that we, we're not bragging. We're giving God the praise for the interest in Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Dr. Toombs is in the house. Thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Watch this. So this post, this was last Monday, coming back after two weeks of rest, voice rest and camp meeting. It said, uh, this post has reached 7,474 people with 6,050 views. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, what that says to me is that people are indeed interested, teachers, preachers, pastors, bishops, apostles, in this next outpouring of Holy Spirit, my God. Ooh. So I'm back in school. You all know that. I'm at Pentecostal Theological Seminary in addition to finishing up some paperwork over at Liberty. But this morning, class starts in both schools, okay? And my morning class on Monday, I'm so excited with Dr. Estrella Alexander, ah, is Black Pentecostalism. I can't wait. So y'all be praying for me. Praise God that I just don't sit there and drool. But I'm excited about it. And I will not take it back. Praise God. This is our finest hour. Claudette Malcolm, Overseer Lanika Jenkins. God bless you. Karen Jenkins Watts. This is our finest hour. Erdine, God bless you, Overseer. Tamara Chestnut, this is our finest hour. Somebody write our finest hour. This is hour of Holy Spirit. Hello, Elder Kel Fort. God bless you, Tamara Chestnut. Sharon Lowry, coming up the timeline. Wow. And I was sharing this. This is all organic growth. This is not paid growth. This is not boosted growth. This is organic growth. Can you give the Lord a praise? Can we honor the Lord? Can we give God praise for attracting people to the message of Pentecost, to the gospel of Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit? Praise the name of the Lord. And we've got to include the language. The gospel of Jesus Christ includes Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. It does not neglect him. It does not overlook him. It does not dismiss him. Holy Spirit is involved and active and superintending the affairs of man, whether we like it or not. Some affairs are peaceful. Some affairs are not. But he is superintending the affairs of man. Glory to God. He is in the earth with us. He is God with us. And I need you to hear what I'm saying. He is God with us. Holy Spirit is God with us. Good morning, Esquire, Vanola Roll. Good morning, Dr. Aqua Copeland. Good morning. Coming up the timeline. Good to see you, Vanola. Oh, Pastor Janice Roberts, I'm reading. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm so excited for you. Praise God, Pastor Lori Ann Jones. Woo, yes, God, he's the gift that keeps on giving. So we are excited. We're just excited about what Holy Spirit is doing. And so when I say, come, let's praise the Lord. Come, let's magnify the Lord. That's what I mean. Praise God, because he is doing amazing things. Glory to God. Just think about what that means. That's 7,000 people. That's one broadcast of last week. 7,000 people saw this broadcast of the Holy Spirit. Imagine if every one of them shared it one time. That's 14,000 people that's coming to Pentecost. And that's my excitement. That's my excitement. That's my thrill. That's my desire. That's my assignment is to get us to Pentecost. Now, we are talking about Holy Spirit leading our lives and training our human spirit. You don't have my book, you need to get it. Go to Amazon.com or you can go to www.gotellit.org and you can get it. Hello, Rosie oh, McNeil. God bless you. How to reach? Yes. Yes, Lamone. 
This is our finest hour. See you back. This is our finest hour. Good morning, Mother Pearl. It's our finest hour. Hallelujah. Arlethea, good morning. This is our finest hour. It is the hour of Holy Spirit. It's the season of Holy Spirit. It's the dispensation of Holy Spirit. It's our finest hour. Oh my God, that's so amazing to me. So we must train our human spirit. We must tame and train our human spirit. Dr. Copeland, we must do it, Aqua. We must do it, Barbara Samuel. Look at this, we'll float like a butterfly sting. You're like, I love it, I love it. We must be sensitive. Valerie Thomas, good morning. To the Holy Spirit, Dee Nicholson, this is our finest hour. This is our Holy Spirit. This is the hour of the saints. This is the day of the saints. This is the day of the body, the body life. That's why we have to be healthy. This is why we must be mentally healthy and we must be emotionally healthy. We must be physically healthy. We must be financially healthy because this is our finest hour. So when you talk about training your human spirit, understanding that you are spirit, understanding that you live in a body, but you are spirit. And remember that your human spirit, praise God, houses Holy Spirit. That's where Holy Spirit takes up his abode in us. Now, we must train our human spirit to submit to Holy Spirit that lives in us. It's no easy feat. Mastery of self is no easy feat. Glory to God, and you are not going to get it perfect all the time, but continue to make progress even if you're not perfect. Hallelujah. Training our human spirit to listen, to obey, to submit, to humble ourselves to the voice of Holy Spirit is vital. And if you want Holy Spirit to lead your life, and you do, I know you do, it is, a, it is a conscious choice and a constant decision that you need to make each and every day. Somebody put down there, each and every day. Each and every day, each moment of the day, all through the day, you and I must make a conscious choice and a constant decision to every day Obey Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit lives in us, Curtis Lee. God bless you. Yes, that's a praise report. Yes, Renee Pickett, God bless you. That's a praise report, not about me, about Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's about Holy Spirit. How he is making himself known, Elder Carmelita Chestnut. He is drawing, yes, uh, Pastor Jamelia, I receive that evangelist. I receive that woman of God. I receive that. This is our finest hour, evangelist Letitia Cherie. Well done on this past weekend. Andrea Carter Blair, good morning, daughter. Good morning. It is our finest hour. Our finest hour. 7,474. That's one video. That's one broadcast. That's because people are looking for good news and looking for strength, they're looking for endurance, they're looking for power, they're looking for victory, glory to God, Holy Spirit is doing what he does, amen, so stay focused, you know, dig it out, those of you that have ministries and you're carving it out, dig it out, do the work, do the grunt work, <laughs> praise the name of our God, hallelujah, this is a great hour, for us to study, to, to know Holy Spirit like we have never known before. And I'm excited about that. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit has made it possible for us to experience the supernatural. Holy Spirit makes it possible for us to experience the supernatural. The manifestations of the supernatural come through the Holy Spirit in the earth. Praise God. And so... When we say that we're going to obey the Holy Spirit, it is a discipline. It is a discipline that we must practice every day. <laughs> we're in training camp. Yes, God. Yes, God. We are in the training camp of the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit does not want us 
to obey by willpower or gritting our teeth or uh, uh, okay okay no it needs to become comfortable it needs to become easy it needs to become cheerful that obedience to holy spirit is cheerful you you have you have no regrets about following the holy spirit you're not arguing back and forth with holy spirit you are in that you're in the pocket as they say <laughs> You're in the pocket. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're in the pocket with Holy Spirit. And you are doing the best every day to be sensitive, to hear him, to obey him. It is a discipline that we must develop. Praise God. And we must do it every single day. Every day. So you must pray. Holy Spirit. Help me to be led by you. Help me to walk. Pastor Patricia Thomas, help me to walk. Benita, walk waters. Help me to walk. Help me to be led. Help me to submit every day to make that decision. Every hour of the day. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Now, remember in Romans chapter number eight, verse seven, Paul says that the natural mind is enmity against God. The natural mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, nor can it ever be. Wow, that's powerful. Joyce Watkins coming up the time like Martha Boggins. Hallelujah. Our spirit man must yield Shirley Bostic each and every day to Holy Spirit. Each and every day, each and every decision, Anita Daly. Each and every day, Sherry Samuel. Each and every day, I have to decide to submit to Holy Spirit. Uh, the, the psalm says there is a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is destruction. So our natural mind is already wired. Mother Mary Davis, good morning. So glad to see you yesterday. It's already wired to be in disagreement with God. Amen. Now. Somebody said, so how do I tame or train my human spirit knowing that my mind is hostile to God? I don't care if you are saved, your human mind, Romans 8 verse 7, is hostile to God. Wow, hostile. <laughs> hostile to God. It is hostile. So therefore, my human mind, the king says carnal, which simply means human. My human mind is hostile to God. The laws of God irritates my natural mind. I don't want to do it. I don't like doing it. <laughs> but I realize that if I am to please God, I must train my human spirit to submit to Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit is our helper. He has been given to us to help us keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. He's been given to us to help us Commit, com, commit our way to the Lord, to, to commit our mind to the Lord. Holy Spirit has been given us as a helper. God bless you, Dr. Thea. He has been given to us as a helper to help us keep his commandments. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got help. We got help, folks. It's not easy. 
It's not, I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm not even going to tell you it's simple. But I am going to tell you that it's not hard. For the way of a transgressor is hard. God says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. But because we have given over to our emotions and our temperaments for so long, now that we are filled with Holy Spirit, now that we have engaged Holy Spirit, we must now learn to submit to him, to surrender to him. Glory to God. It must be done. And you can only obey God consistently if you're listening and you are submitted to the inward witness of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When you cannot reach your bishop, your pastor, your prayer partner, you can reach the Holy Ghost. He's right here. If you have received Christ as your Savior, you have received the gift of salvation. You have gone to the upper room and you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What else do? What else can he give us? There is nothing else. Praise God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Audrey Lynn Turner, God bless you. We must understand that our human spirit can be trained. You can train your human spirit to not be depressed. You can train your human spirit to not live beat up and condemned. You can train your human spirit to not always, you know, see the dark of things. You can train it. Now, I'm going to show you this. When we talk about obedience to the Holy Spirit, I want to show you this in 2 Corinthians, praise God. And it's a familiar passage of scripture but let's look at it a different way. Amen. Let's look at it a different way. Paul says in Galatians that if we would live by the spirit, if we would obey the spirit, we would not gratify the desires of our sinful nature. And I know we always think that that's physical. But a lot of you, you sin emotionally. You may not sin physically, but you sin emotionally. That depression, that feeling bad about yourself, that unhappiness, that restlessness, all of that is emotional sin, emotional baggage. <laughs> I got to meet Elder uh, Laird with Love Homemade. I got to meet her in, 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 in uh, New York, Mandela Hayes, my God, sweethearts, sweethearts. Some of us are not sinning physically, but we're sinning emotionally. We're sinning in our thought life. We don't obey Holy Spirit in our thought life. We don't obey Holy Spirit in our soul, in our emotions. And so we have to tame our human spirit. You can't carry a grudge. You can't be offended. You can't chase every dog. You can't run behind every rabbit. You got to get still. You got to come into a place of satisfaction with Holy Spirit. When you trust him to lead you and guide you, you trust him. You honor him. You worship. You adore him. And you train your human spirit. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to do what the Holy Spirit is saying for us to do. And it takes daily, 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 daily conscious and deliberate intentional choices every day every day Woo! glory to god so let's go over to second corinthians chapter number 10 and this is a familiar the very familiar passage of scripture i want you to look at this a different way this morning from verse 4 for the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world, no. But on the contrary, our weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds. And I used to think that 
strongholds was real, like, woo, like unbeatable forces and a fortress. Like, it couldn't even be beat. Like, it can't even be, you know, like conquered. Then I read the next verse. And the next verse says, the power that we have is to demolish arguments. Yay! Hey. And every pretension, pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we are ready to punish every act of, of disobedience when our own obedience is complete. Our souls need to be well, absolutely the saving of our souls. Our souls and receive the engrafted word of God for it is able to save our souls. Now, how do I train my human spirit to obey Holy Spirit? I must take captive every thought and make every thought obedient to Christ. Hey. Oh my God. My, I need y'all to hear that. Let's, let's read this in the, this is the NLT, grab your paper Bibles. Let's see. I want to see what this says. Second Corinthians chapter number 10. Listen to what this says. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and woo, to destroy false arguments. Now remember Romans 8 verse 7 says that our natural mind is hostile to God, to the laws of God, and it cannot be subject. So then what must I do? I must bring every proud obstacle, my God, of human reasoning. I must, watch this, destroy the strongholds of human reasoning. Now, I've been in places where they were teaching this text and they was like, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Like it was some force outside of the self no the stronghold that we are constantly battling god with is the stronghold of human reasoning ha huh, glory to god human reasoning we destroy verse 5 from the nlt every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. And we capture our rebellious thoughts and teach those thoughts to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, then you can punish everyone who remains disobedient. Good God Almighty. That's from the New Living Translation. That's Romans. Thank you. Romans chapter number 10. Pastor Davis, I'm in Romans chapter number 10. Romans 10. Romans chapter number 10. It says now because we have this hostile mind, because we have this hostile mind, that is not subject to the law of God. Watch this. In God's graciousness, he gives us his Holy Spirit, who is the only person that knows his mind. According to Paul's writing to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. It says here that no one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts 
except God's own spirit. So God's own spirit knows God's own mind. And God would give us the indwelling of Holy Spirit to help us tame our minds and train our human spirit. Oh my God. Oh my God. Y'all hearing this? This is amazing to me. I love this. It says, so we must destroy, we must destroy the strongholds. We must knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. And we must destroy false arguments. So while we are training our human spirit to obey, we are knocking down false arguments and reasonings. I'm going to get it in the New King. I got all of them right here for us. Praise God. Let's look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Again, it's not a new scripture, but I saw it differently. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse 4. And you may be more familiar with this language. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments. The old king says imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So this is how I must train my human spirit so that I'm not emotionally sinning, I'm not physically sinning, I'm not financially sinning, I'm not verbally sinning, I'm walking in a place of obedience to Holy Spirit in every facet of my life. See, this isn't just your spiritual life, this is your thought life. Oh, glory to God. Our thought life. I don't know about you, but I am constantly putting boundaries around my thought life. Dr. Bradford, every area of our lives must surrender to Holy Spirit. I am constantly, listen, I know you want to focus on your spiritual life, but you got to focus on your thought life. Your thought life is a part of your human spirit. Your thought life is a part of the soulish realm of you. You've got to be able to concentrate on your thoughts, your reasonings, your opinions, your philosophies, your perspectives. Woo! If I am going to train my spirit to obey God's spirit, then I've got to manage even my thoughts, not just my words, but my thoughts, because my thought life is hostile to the laws of God. Mm. Whoa, wait, y'all don't like this. Y'all don't like this. Y'all don't like this. Oh my God. Oh my God. We cannot look at things on the outward appearance. We cannot just see things from our perspectives. We cannot just see things from our opinions. Dr. Patricia Jackson coming up the timeline. We must manage. We must do a better job. Sheila Anderson. We must do a better job of managing our thought life. <laughs> Somebody, somebody give me some hearts. Keep loving me. Keep loving me. And we don't always do a good job. Your thoughts tell you, oh, you're emotionally depressed. Oh, you're sad. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're, oh, this. Oh, that. All of those things, all of those ideas, all of those thoughts that release the, in, the, uh, the enzymes of sadness and release all of that. The thyroid starts misbehaving and acting ugly 
and starts releasing the hormones of sadness and sorrow and grief and pain. But it starts with a thought. My disobedience to God never started with my disobedience. It started with my thoughts. Glory to God. It starts with our thoughts. Our thought life. The thoughts in our head. We got to put boundaries around our thought life. If I'm going to train my human spirit, my thoughts need to be pure. My thoughts, my inmost thoughts must come under the microscope of Holy Spirit. It's not always my actions. It's my thoughts. Oh, come on here. Because I can be preaching a good preach and dancing a good dance, but my thoughts, my thought life. Ooh, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to up in here today? Who am I talking to up in here today? My God, my thoughts. And so I must allow Holy Spirit to get a hold of my thoughts. And my thought life, how I process, what lens I look through, what is my worldview. The Bible says, uh, Titus says, to the pure, all things are pure. Wait, wait, let's get that. I need to show that to you. I need to show that to you. I think I'm going to go, ah, uh, God, oh God, oh God. Let me, let me show that to you because you need to see that. Uh, on your own. I don't need to quote that. Praise God. I, I need to make sure that you all can see that uh, for yourselves because that's a powerful scripture. Hold on just a minute. I got it here in my notes. Glory, glory, glory. You need to see this because so many of you are, are your thoughts are not pure. Ah, uh, your thoughts. Our thoughts are not pure. Huh? Our thoughts are not pure. Our thoughts are, y'all not going to say nothing. Our thoughts are not pure. Let's go to Titus. Titus is one of the pastoral epistles. So there's first, second Timothy, and then Titus. Let's look at Titus chapter number one. Titus chapter number one and verse 15. Here it is. I want you to see this. To the pure, verse 15, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. For even their mind and conscience are defiled. That's Titus 1 and 15. You can read that whole chapter. It talks about, watch this. It talks about insubordination idle talkers, deceivers, wow, whose mouths must be stopped because they subvert whole households. They even talk about uh, the leadership. They talk about teachers. They, they are just wicked with their thoughts. They're wicked with their minds. And so Paul rebukes them. He says, rebuke them sharply. We don't like rebuke. We don't like controversy. We don't like rebuke. We don't like, oh, that's hard, that's hard. Okay, and I get it. I, I, I understand that. But this is how we get trained. You get trained in a military assignment through the discipline. And when you are out of order, you get rebuked. All right? We don't like that in the body of Christ. We just want to do whatever we want to do, say whatever we want to do, go wherever we want to go. No, no one, want nobody to say nothing to us. Watch this. It says, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn from the truth. I understand what Paul is talking about. But to the pure, all things are pure. Wow, listen, you got to hear this. When we are training our human spirit, we are not just training ourselves for spiritual success. We must train ourselves for mental success, for, for emotional success. Holy Spirit is not just working in the area of ministry, folks. Holy Spirit is working in science. 
Holy Spirit is working in education. Holy Spirit is working in family cultures. Holy Spirit is working in government. Holy Spirit is working throughout the entire culture. Holy Spirit is not just working on church stuff. Holy Spirit is working on everything. He's superintending the affairs of men. Woo, come on, come on, come on. Ah, glory to God. So all that anxiety, worry, all that comes from your carnal mind. That doesn't come from the Spirit of God. That comes from a carnal mind. It comes from a mind that is that is not submitted to God. Oh, wow. Listen, listen. Everything starts with a thought. You've got to hear me today. Training my human spirit means that I manage my thoughts. My thoughts don't manage me. I manage my thoughts. My thoughts. Thoughts don't manage me. I must manage my thoughts. And then I must allow my, my relationship with Holy Spirit to give me the proper thought to replace the lie-based thought so that at the right time, I make the right decisions. Listen, life-based thinking is a reality. And you've got to pull those thoughts down because those thoughts are rebellious to the laws of God. <laughs> and so we want our, we want our natural, listen, I got some, some trained clinicians on here this morning. And every day, so many talented, gifted, educated people. I don't at, at all try to be in other people's area of expertise. But let me tell you about mental illness from what I know from the scriptures. Let me tell you about mental disease, thought life illness. Let me tell you, by the time it manifests, and you are in need of therapy, clinical applications, etc. Those thoughts have been off a long time. Y'all ain't gonna like me. Y'all ain't gonna like me. But I'm gonna tell you this. <laughs> Them thoughts been bad a long time. Your mind, your thoughts, mental illness, your thoughts, your thought life. Has been off a long time. No one has challenged your thinking on things. No one has challenged your opinion on things. No one has challenged your perspective on things. And you meditate and marinate in a bad thought life until your thought life becomes ill. God knows I'm teaching the truth. Well, glory to God. Now you need clinical intervention. Now you need medical intervention, therapy intervention. But our thought life has been bad a long time. We're trying to do ministry with a bad mind. We're trying to be married with a bad mind. We're trying to be professional in the marketplace with a bad mind. We're trying to be successful and prosperous with a bad mind. We're trying to win the loss, but we got bad minds. Whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Oh my God. I manage my thoughts. My thoughts don't manage me. Sometimes I'm laying in the bed at night, you know, right before I go to sleep, I pray in the spirit. I pray in the spirit. I have to interrupt those thoughts. I have to interrupt those thoughts and ideas before I go to sleep. I have to interrupt them by praying in the spirit because praying in the Holy Ghost is a clinical intervention for mental illness, for your bad thought. What is mental illness? It's your bad thought life. 
It's your bad thought life. And while you're trying to do all of this for God, your thoughts, your mind is going bad. You must be stirred up in your pure mind. There's a pure mind in there. But we have to come against the strongholds of arrogant thoughts. We have to come against the stronghold of opinions and perspectives. We have to come against the arrogance of our own minds. You're not going to like this, but it's true. Nobody has ever confronted. Y'all don't like it when people confront your thoughts. You get mad. You get angry. You get an attitude. You stomp your foot. You slam doors. But no one has ever challenged those thoughts. Let me just say this. I hear this by the Spirit. Challenge your children's thoughts. Challenge it early. Challenge your children's thought life. When they're sitting in the room with the door closed, go in there and challenge those thoughts. When they don't want to interact with people, when they don't want anyone to touch them, go in and investigate those thoughts. Because it is, it is then that the enemy begins to attack them. And if those thoughts are not challenged, don't passively parent. Don't be a passive parent. Pastors, don't be passive pastors. Challenge their thoughts. Challenge the way they think about things. Oh God, hit them on no she. Challenge the way people are thinking. Don't be so afraid of controversy. Don't be so afraid if people don't like you. It won't affirm you. You've got to chat. You can't, you can't power the word of God in somebody by the preaching and teaching and not challenge their thoughts. Challenge their thoughts. Challenge the way people think. When people say things, say, well, why do you think it like that? Why do you see it like that? What why, 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 why? Challenge, challenge your own thoughts. Challenge your thoughts, saying, well, why am I thinking about this? Why, why is this even on my mind? Well, this ain't none of my, why, where did this come from? Why, because those thoughts will shut down the voice of Holy Spirit in your life. And they will become more powerful. They will become more dominant in your actions. If you don't challenge, you got to challenge this stuff, folks. Oh, God. Whoa, who am I talking to? You got to challenge. You got to challenge. You got to challenge your thoughts. You got to challenge your opinions. You got to challenge your perspectives. You got to challenge that stuff. Why? Because your human spirit will pull from that reservoir rather than pulling from the reservoir of your, of your, your spiritual life in your belly where your where holy spirit lives out of your belly flows the rivers of living life you got to shut that operating system down in order for this operating system to be dominant in your lives and many of us have never shut down the bad mind in order to engage holy spirit in our day-to-day -day life i know what i'm talking about you've got to investigate their thoughts investigate what they're thinking investigate where it's coming from you gotta shut this stuff down mental illness is not a sudden occurrence doesn't happen suddenly that my that those thoughts been bad a long time some of you now you nurse depression you nurse sadness you nurse low self-esteem you marinate in your failures. You marinate in your mistakes. I'm challenging your thoughts right now. I'm challenging, I'm asking you to investigate the source of that. Glory to God. Go I know he got that. I know God is speaking to somebody. Come on now, some of us. Hey, you need to challenge why you react like you do. You need to challenge why that bothers you, why that triggers you. Challenge that. Why does that constantly cause you to go off? Why does that particular person or that particular word or that particular sentence structure challenge you to misbehave and causes you to override Holy Spirit in your life? 
You've got to challenge it. Oh, glory to my Namahaya. Challenge why you believe what you believe. Challenge it. You got to challenge your thoughts. You have to challenge it. And here's what Paul says: destroy all of the strongholds of human reasoning and false arguments. God Almighty. Whoa! I got to put, y'all, we were seeing them strong, casting down imagination, pulling down strongholds. We're pulling down strongholds. Ain't no strongholds out there. Strongholds is right here. Right here between your left ear and your right ear. That's where the strongholds are. That's where the strongholds are in your children. That's where the strongholds are in you. Come on, man. Come on. At, at a certain age, I have to ask you why you're not married. At a certain age, I got to ask you why you're not a man of responsibility. Challenge that. Women, I have to ask you. Come on, I have to ask us. Why are you thinking like that? Why are you believing that you're this way or that way or that you're oriented? I challenge people's thoughts. Well, I'm gay. Listen, let me challenge your thoughts. I'm not here to talk about you are or you're not. But where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? We have, I have to challenge the thoughts. Why are you? Or why do you want to overeat? Why do you want to eat that again? You just ate. You're not. Why you challenge that? That's not a medical disease. That's a thought life. That's a thought life situation. Oh, come on, to Sheba. Glory to God. Who am I talking to today? And so when we're training our human spirit, we must acknowledge the fact, glory to God, that, that I can go into a place of mental illness by un one, yes, unrestrained thought that over a course of time has wrecked havoc in my life. And I never, I never challenged it. I never tamed it. I never trained my human spirit to bring that thought into subjection. I never trained my human spirit. I never trained my human spirit to replace that lie-based thought with a Holy Spirit idea. I never trained myself. Oh, shakamabahaya. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you, investigate. You got to investigate. And I'm going to train my human spirit to obey Holy Spirit, then both operating systems cannot coexist at the same time. I'm either going to obey Holy Spirit or I'm going to obey my human reasoning. And either way, either way, I'm going to have to get it together if I am going to please God. Listen, my time is up. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm telling you, this is amazing teaching because we have missed so much. So much of what we are doing is not coming from Holy Spirit. Huh, somebody's beat me up. Oh, I feel bad because when I get corrected, I, oh, where is that coming from? Where is that? What's the source of that? You got to bring that thought that is causing that emotional response into subjection of the Holy Spirit. And you got to make sure, listen folks, I'm telling you, whoa, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. All of these things that are in our thought life, they must be eradicated because they cause us to miss the leading and guiding of Holy Spirit. When your spirit speaks to me, I need to be able to hear it. I need to be able to hear when your spirit speaks to me. Then the next thing says, with my whole heart, I agree. Now, if your spirit speaks to me, I need to be able to hear it. It doesn't need to come through 9 million other thoughts, hoops, processes. Because I have not cleared up these thoughts of rebellion Thoughts of anger, grudge, thought, oh, they hurt me, that was wicked, that was, the, get that thought out of your mind because it will block the sensitive, sweet voice of Holy Spirit in your life. You don't want anything. 
You don't want anything, especially in your own mind, to block the sweet voice of Holy Spirit in your life. We're training ourselves. We're training. We're training our human spirit. We're training ourselves. We got to do a better job with our thought life. Got to do a better job. I can't ask you to manage your mouth until you manage your thoughts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I need to hear when the Spirit speaks to me. But if I got all of these other things rolling around in another operating system, it's going to shut down my ability not only to hear, but to obey what the Spirit says to me. And I'm going to always, 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 always be in this fight. Challenge those thoughts. Challenge your thoughts. Challenge the child's thoughts. I just heard that in the spirit of God. Even in your church ministries and Sunday school. You got to challenge it, folks. Got to challenge and, and it's so deeply embedded. Lie-based thoughts. So deeply embedded in our psyche. Oh, by the grace of God. Hey, listen, let me pray with you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for Holy Spirit. I thank you that he is in our life. He is with us now. Now we gladly and joyfully submit our thought life to the will of the Father. We gladly and joyfully submit our thought life to the will of God the Father, to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm training my human spirit to obey the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I must bring these thoughts into captivity. And I thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, even in generational thoughts, patterns, mm, soul ties. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we plead the blood. We ask now, Holy Spirit, for discernment. Some things are patterns. Some things are generational. Some things are family cultures. But Lord, if it's shutting down Holy Spirit in my life, then I must bring it into captivity. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The sweet voice. The sweet, sensitive voice of Holy Spirit. My God. Woo, I got to go, folks. This is so delicious. Hallelujah. This is so, so good. Woo, you want him to have your ministry, but do you want him to have your thoughts? Your thought life. Your thought life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord. Yes, but what if I can't hear it? What if there's so much trash and garbage in my thought life? I didn't even hear it. Or it was so muffled. Woo. I got to go. Hey, listen, hashtag Pentecost in the pandemic. Hashtag Bishop Corletta J. Vaughn. Hashtag School of the Holy Spirit. Share this on your page. We're going to come back and dig into this. All of this week, we're going to be digging into this. Obedience of the Holy Spirit starts with my thought life. Hey, I got to go. Love y'all.